All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Gamescom. It is day two here of the groups, and today we find out who gets out first seed, who gets out second seed going into the playoffs. The next match we have now, our second match of the day, is going to be a second seed match, Anders. Who's playing? Yes, the very first team to make the quarterfinals is Team Epsilon after defeating NIP. Now we need to decide if NIP or Hellraisers are going to either finish, as you said, second towards the quarterfinals or are going to be knocked out of the tournament. We do have a very cool bracket for you guys here. Epsilon, they're in they're in that golden frame and the question is one of these two teams is going to join them and the other one is going to drop out of the tournament uh, this is how brutal this whole tournament has been looking at the groups this is why you were so excited as soon as you saw the groups you realized these are stacked every group has at least three teams that can get out yeah. that can make something happen they can go for upsets but all of them i mean these are the 16 best teams in the world and there's like no discussion that's just how it is that's how close the competition is going to be we have the behemoth nip who have made every final of every major so far in CS. And they are now on the brink of getting eliminated in the groups. Yeah, and they're going to be playing against a super hungry Hellraisers team. I am actually definitely worried for Nip right now. I am as well. I mean, Hellraisers, we know that they've been boot camping for a month, that they've all been together, same location, practicing day in, day out in preparation for this event. And Nip have not necessarily had all that much time to get prepared. I mean, we've, we talked about them picking up a, a coach recently, PETA, yeah. XSK PETA. I mean, he is now a part of NIP. He's that sixth man in the team for them, but they really haven't that, had that much time to gel to make it work. No, I think it's a great idea, and Peter is, uh, first of all, p personality wise, Peter's a very strong character. But actually, let's just get back to that, because they do have the map selection, and this is such a cool feature that Valve have implemented, and we do have a bunch of Valve developers here. So, Vito here, Mirage is out, Nuke is out, Cobblestone is out, Dust2 is out, and oh, now wow. it's going to be randoming and. Did it go to overpass? Oh, it went to overpass. Are you kidding me? NIP. Cobble to sort out first seed and overpass for the second. So it random between what? Inferno, Cash, and overpass were the, were the three yeah. randoms. And it went to overpass. Did Valve rig this for us? They did. <laughs> I'm convinced. I'm convinced now. It's not random at all. This is unreal. We are now going to sort out the fate of the best team in CS history on a new map. Now, on one of the two new maps that have been added into these groups. One team could choose to ban out both maps and be absolutely sure they wouldn't play it. But neither of these teams are strong enough on all the rest of the maps to really safely do that. So one or both of them decided, I'm gonna, we're going to bank on we're, the other team banning this map for us, and they didn't. We're going to run the risk. Yeah, That's we're going to run the risk. And I mean, so it was a gamble. We, we saw that yesterday. This guy, the tall guy, says Dojo on his back. He is the monster. He is the monster, and he is especially in front of NIP. Just checking Twitter right before here. Lurpus did bring up a really good point, because of course he's watching as well. Um, Shoxi had a terrific performance against NIP, and he's had that historically too. But as uh, Lurpus was pointing out, Doja is the other guy who's really well known for playing so good against NIP. And there we go, the Swedes, they're all sat down. We got Peter in the background. We've got Tweedy in the background too, of course, taking pictures. Mm -hmm. But right now, it's about figuring out who's going to be there. Angel taking control, talking, we've got Kucha listening in as well. And um, yeah, they're really, you can see, they're ready for it. This is a team, by the way. This is, by the way, a team that was meant, basically, to, to beat NIP in its yeah. formation. Originally, the creation of this team was meant to take down NIP. That was it. They were going to put together the super top team, basically. After a VP shattered, they took Markloff and Edward from Na'Vi as well. Yeah. One of the historic lineups of CS. They made the ultra team, basically, the, 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 the defenders of uh, CS, to take they, out NIP. And they split apart the then versus pro team yeah. that had and the that, Na'Vi team. They broke apart two lineups to form this lineup up to beat NIP, but that's what they wanted. The VP team were the team to break Nip's streak. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. That's why, you know, it's like they, they are the team to take out Nip's streak. The huge streak, the legendary streak on land, Nip unbeaten for 87 maps, essentially. 87 and zero was uh, NIP's previous land record when everything was going fine. Then they went to SLTV Star Series where Virtus Pro was, uh, was going to be able to beat them. That's not the Virtus Pro lineup that you guys know now as, as uh, the Polish lineup. Mm. This is a different one. And back then, they had a guy called Fox playing as well, who unfortunately we haven't seen since. But um, Fox was definitely a bit of a monster with the AWP as oh, well. Yeah. He might be back one day. A lot of people, as we said, you never really quit Counter-Strike. Just recently, we've seen that said former um, yeah, NIP back. and SK member as well. As, uh, I think it was SK. I might, might be making that up, well, but certainly the, NIP. NIP, um, exactly. Has been playing again with the, with the former ESG lineup. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, 
More evidence, nobody ever really quits Counter-Strike. You just take a longer break sometime. Take a hiatus. You know, you go on a sabbatical. You, you, you experience a little bit, but then you realize, you know, you're one true love where you're going to be. And that's Adrian in the background there from Kazakhstan. Normally, as you were pointing out earlier, on a 120 ping wooden PC. Now he's far removed from Kazakhstan, mm. and he's, an, he's a really dangerous player. This team is one that nobody can take lightly. If, these, if this team makes it to the Grand Finals, I, no, I would not be surprised. They, they are capable of it. That's yes. the thing. We're, right now, to settle this second seed in this group, we're looking at two teams who are absolutely capable of getting to the Grand Finals and even taking it. Yes. So they, we're, that's how this is going to be throughout the rest of this day. All three teams remaining in this second day in each of these groups, they're all capable. They're all capable of taking the whole thing. So that's how close this is all going to be, guys. Look all how, day long. It doesn't stop it yet, yeah, Adrian, man. Look how badass he is. Dude, he is a beast. And on LAN as well, that's the thing. This is the true thing because when he is online, he plays 120 ping and he still gets kills. He still is somewhat to fear, but as soon as he gets down to the same ping, it's, it's just like he flips a switch and all of a sudden he's completely out of control. He's got Doja at his right, Doja, the raid boss, essentially. He's the guy who can walk around the map, get frags at will, come up with the big clutch plays for Hellraisers. An absolute monster. Yeah, Fifarin over towards the right-hand side here, and get right all the way. And we've got Exist in the middle, and then, as we said, the important addition of Peter as the sixth guy, who is mm -hmm. able to talk to them while in-game. While in-game. Yeah, he can communicate that with is, the team. That is something we have to really put emphasis on, because basically, he is sitting there, <laughs> you know, Fifarin, I mean, well, Fifarin classic, Forest. Absolutely yeah, that's, classic that's forest. forest for you, but like, Peta is in the VoIP with the team. He's able to communicate with them. He takes all the information that he sees in the rounds, and then he's able to give that, feed that into Exist, so that Exist can come up with the next strat. Like, that Here. is a huge advantage to have, but let's see. Let's get into it. Here it comes. One team going home, one team moving to the quarterfinals. NIP and Hellraisers. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the ESL 1 Cologne 2014 event, and we're going to be on Overpass for the first time on the mainstream. We get to cast this match, so we'll see how it's going to unfold. And this is perfect. This this is perfect. If Hellraisers decide to go for a full-on rush, this could be huge. And they do manage to spot it early on. The Flash is going to come out. There's four or five members here soon, but there's four members on this B-side for Nip. They've got the stack. And if Hellraisers push through here, this could be a slaughter. The smokes are going down to buy some time here. But Nip, they have to know. They have to figure it out. You can see them just trying to check all the angles. There you go. Freiburg spots out two guys. Yeah, he sees them, and I think they knew anyway. They heard them running in. They had that uh, boost up over the wall there. And Hellraiser's is just uh, taking up spotting construction, waking for a little bit, not really doing too much, but looking to maybe go for that B bomb site as soon as they can. But the stack from NIP, the Swedish team, they've definitely figured this out. And this is the first time we've had overpass on the mainstream as well. But one of the new maps we have to see now exist. Already going to start off strong, picking up one, but Adrian's going to take out three Hellraisers. It falls apart, and Nip, their streak, their pistol round streak, it is not going to hold. Or it will hold, actually. That's the problem. Yeah, unfortunately it will, because they've been losing a lot of pistol rounds. Bomb is down two on four here. Forest and Fuflaren going to have to come up with something truly special if they want to retake this bomb site. Rushing in. Fuflaren goes down. Now Forest one on four. Picks up the one headshot, but he's going to go down. Adrian will pick him off, and it's a triple kill for the Kazakhstanian player. And we will see Hellraisers take the first round of Overpass. Yeah, we heard that shout all the way back here. I mean, we're pretty far away from the players right now, and we still heard them shout. Hellraisers are hype right now and they pick up the pistol round on this map. So important as well. I mean, we haven't yet seen uh, Overpass played on the mainstream, and we haven't really seen it played at all because the basically... The players have been hiding all information. As far as Prax are concerned, only the players know anything at all. They've been hiding it completely from other teams that they're going to face from everybody else. So we have no idea what to expect. But we do have a, a bit of an idea as far as what what round, what um, bomb site is going to be favored. And Hellraiser's taking out B-side is pretty much according to plan. Now they're playing it very defensively. They're actually anticipating this aggressive move from, from NIP. And that surprises me because Overpass does not seem like a map, well, at least not in this tunnel area of the map where the ladder is. I, I wouldn't expect them to, to go so aggressive, but this is something Hellraisers have seen coming. So that's really cool. Angel taking up spot by the birthday party, moving towards the toilet. And that's one of the best things about this map, I think, is, is the call out names. You ever need to take a break? Exactly. There you go. Oh, and they get the flank. This is a real problem here. Putting two guys in this tunnel like this, it's going to be the spread, but somehow Exist finds a frag just the same. Takes out Adrian. Angel will find him in the end. Brings it back to a three-on-three. Three. But still, that was actually very good work there by Exist. This is the problem, though, with this position right here, is that you can get flanked. If you fully commit two guys into the tunnel like this, if they manage to come up through mid, Hellraisers, they're going to flank you completely and just catch you in a sandwich. Elrace is doing a fine job of readjusting to the situation, though, and I'm actually su I am surprised by the fact that they managed to uh, to do such a good job here in IP. Flaren is going to be alone, and now if he can get another kill, that'd be really impressive. But it's going to be tough, and he's going to go down to Dojum. So there's a double. 
for him and the round one for Hellraisers. Yeah. Two quick rounds here for Hellraisers. Very clean work from Hellraisers. Very patient play from Hellraisers as well. This is kind of uh, to their style as well. Similar to Navi, they like to take their time. They like to move around the map, look for picks, and make sure that they can punish any kind of aggression coming out of the other team. So Nip, you know, we saw the setup that Nip went for, and it was a bit forward. Hellraisers, they're even farther back. They're just waiting, trying to bait Nip in, and eventually they make it work for themselves. But we're going to have another round of eco here from Nip. Pretty standard. I mean, they lose the pistol. They're not going to do anything crazy here. They know they need to get the gear, basically, to shut Hellraisers down. So they're going to save up for those big rifles. Assist once again moving up. NIPR taking uh, pretty aggressive control of this area. And actually, uh, again, that comes as a surprise to me. Kucher up there. Kirby going down. Got to be really careful. CZ75 here, but he does manage to ward off Exist for a while. Uh, taking minimal damage there as well. But this is what we're talking about. This position right here, that stairwell which Adrian is going down is exactly where Forrest is going to be holding from. And Forrest gets caught instantly. Gets the headshot on Adrian, though. Drops him down to one HP. That was very close there. Exist now trying to look to get the refrag, but it's not going to happen. And Hellraisers are now up two kills on this map. Adrian, one point of health here. It's really not a lot, but it's enough to stay alive. And they're going to walk the long way around by the picnic area. And yes, there is actually a, a basket and a spike out there, which is a nice addition. Is that picnic or is that long? I, that looks like long to me. That's the thing. I, like when I think about it, that's like the longest There's part of this map. There's a picnic basket. Open. You really can't not call it picnic, I think. But long is fine too. I'll I'll go for either. Exist with a good pick off. Going to take down Dosha, and they will even claim a rifle for it. Gerard held in good spot. Picks off one and can't get the double. Unfortunately, leaving Exist alone here to kill three members. Not not exactly an easy task. And he's picked up a gun. Adrian's at one HP. Adrian running right past. He. The reactions on Adrian, though, stunning. He manages to drop Exist down, hits him first, down to 10 HP, despite the fact that he only had one. And now Exist is just looking to try and close the gap here. He wants to make sure that Hellraisers can't back off this site and save those guns. Markov is waiting on the site proper as well. He actually has no way out of here if Exist holds the angle right. Yes, these are some pretty impressive eco rounds coming out from NIP. They're doing good damage, taking all the rifles away, and we'll see if Exist can pick up one more here. Markov walking in, good damage done. It's not really going to quite work. And the bomb, it does oh. go off and kills both members. Miscalculated by Hellraisers. This is a really big deal. They just lost every single rifle they had. Now they're obviously going to be able to rebind them, but on the scoreboard, we can sort of tell it's zero for Markolov right now. It's 50 for Kucha. They just don't have the money to lose around right here. And NIP, they don't either. So this is a big turning point already in the game. And there is an AWP on Markolov and one on Fiflaren. On Fiflaren as well. Fiflaren takes it straight out to long. Fiflaren is going to be trying to, I mean, he's going to look, make sure that nobody can peek him right now, but the smokes are going down. One thing to note here on this map that there, there is no skyboxes. So Nip are able to throw smokes across the map from practically CT spawn. They can land him practically anywhere look at what adrian is doing he's been boosted up on that wall looking over and you're right the sky boxes but also the boost spots is one of the things that makes this map incredibly unique and uh potentially very tough to play if you're if you don't know I what you're it. doing here it's going to be tough i love it and th that's the one thing that gives you hope as well is that you know given time teams are going to come up with incredible strategies on this map so with the lack of skybox, you know, the flashes that can come in from everywhere, the smokes that can come in from everywhere, it's just huge. Trade of shots there at long, Markolov and Fiflorin not managing to connect with either with each other, so they're gonna back off, try another day, reschedule. And we'll see. This is this is really interesting that they're managing to hold A site. This is a, kind of what you expect, seeing as how there's this one choke point to get in onto this A site. With an AWP, if, they, if you hold the angle correctly, you're gonna be able to uh, really put a stop to anything that Hellraisers throw in. But Freiburg with that very nice boost from CT stops Kucher from getting out from Squeak Door. The bomb is still all the way back at T-Spawn, just actually making its way back with 25 seconds. Again, this is really classic Hellraisers, but not really a, a safe choice, I feel like. If they lose a single man going to this, I don't think they can win the round anymore. Gerrite's going to spray down one, keeps holding down, can't pick up the second, but he's done incredible damage to Doja. This should be working out. 10 seconds left, Doja falls, Adrian falls now, Makalov is going to run away and hide the AWP somewhere else, but it's a great round for NIMP, they don't lose a single person. I'm not sure if they know. They have to know that Markov has that AWP, so they're not going to be running after him. But Nip will pick up that crucial first hurdle for them. Pick up the fourth round by and do it perfectly as well. They don't lose a single man in the exchange, so this is excellent for Nip. They only have to rebuy on nades right now, make sure that everybody has kits. You know, Freiburg, get a kit. He's not going to do it. He's stubborn. 
Hellraisers, however, because of that round that Nip had, basically that eco round that they were managed to basically get rid of everybody on Hellraisers. Hellraisers having to rebuy so much equipment in the last round, they have nothing going into this one. So it's all going to be about Markloff and look at the boost. I know, Andrews, yeah. you're going to be happy about this because yeah, yeah. this is the this one is, you know. This is the boost. You can look all the way over to the sniper spot. He's not going to catch anyone, but yeah, because I've been, you know, <laughs> my experience from this match comes from playing with some of the Dignitas guys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, amongst other things, I think there was Device to do pre showing me exactly that spot. So very yeah. interesting one. And it's a bit of a long shot because it's not that often someone's going to be standing there. But if it is, then just cool. And we have a Twitter feed as well. I love it. So ESL, hashtag ESL1, guys, if you want to get on this feed and, uh, and, and put some input in. Definitely very cool. I think, and I can't, I can't back this up with other than just intuition and a little bit of matchmaking uh, experience, I think this is a CT-sided map. And I think if played correctly, it could be quite CT-sided. It can be. It can be because of the positions that you can take up with the smokes, the information that you can get as well. Nip using the boosts well so far to hold off this B site. And we do expect the vast majority of the time for teams to be going to B. And Hellraiser is going for it once again. Markaloff not managing to land the shot on Get Right. He's actually going to be able to sneak back into pit. Very well played. Freiburg is going to manage to pick up one. Goes for a second. Gets the spray. And this is an anti-eco round from Nip. But they have managed to remove Markaloff with that AWP. Yeah, and that's the big thing. And I don't think they can save it any longer. Kucha trapped down there by the ramp and tries to get up close. Won't be taking anyone with him. Freiburg does go down after getting a double kill of in his own. But get right with a triple is a nice start for NIP. 2-3 is what we're looking at moving into the sixth round. And Hellraisers, in spite of no bomb plant, are actually going to force it up. Yeah, they are going to go for it. It seems like they just want to keep the pressure up. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that we're not seeing more activity towards... Well, we are seeing some focus uh, from Hellraisers on mid. But that's the, the main game plan that we expected to see going into this thing is how we have so little information. A lot of it is just based on speculation. But with the layout of the map, you kind of expect pick play to be happening towards A in mid, where Forrest is at long. You expect to have some firefights there from the T side, trying to weaken the defense on A, force a rotation, and then eventually to wind up on B. But they're not waiting for that Hellraisers. They're going straight into B, and this is the risk. The crossfire is working fantastically for Nip. Oh, Dosha and Markolov do get good returns, but they need a lot more. Freiburg's very low on health. One more grenade would finish him, but Dosha is alone here. Markolov is fallen and what can he do i mean if there's some guy you want to be alone uh, you know have alone on your team maybe doja is the one oh but doja is a master doja is death because basically he has the uncanny knack of pulling a get right getting behind people getting those uh getting the sneak up kills and turning these situations into situations he can win but looking towards the likely spot where freiburg was holding which is going to be a very common uh, ct hold spot doja not able to get the headshot yeah, right by the barrels. Can't connect, unfortunately, and that is going to be a triple kill for Freiburg and a 3-3 scoreline. So NIP, after losing the pistol round, they've won every single rifle round uh, once they started by being able to buy. And Hellraisers don't even get the bomb down, which yeah. says something about the strength of of the NIP hold on the CT side. We're not even getting into positions where NIP have to try and retake the bomb sites. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're just stopping it cold. I like that Hellraiser's trying to change up the pace, try and pressure Nip and see just how the defense is holding with an aggressive play, right? Try and change it up. But now, you know, in the next buy round, I, I expect to see them try and go for picks once again, try and slow down the pace a little bit, play more to their style, as Forrest is having a field day right now in this anti-eco. Uh, will be put uh, down by Markov. Looked like a really cool move from Forrest, maybe trying to wrap around them. And that whole that whole area by the uh, by the toilets is a little bit confusing because there are you know basically two sides to that wall you can run a, on either side and that that makes it uh, some tricky uh, stuff can happen there definitely. Exist trying to get an headshot on somebody here. There's a Molotov as well. They have picked up the one M4 here on Kucha, but three on four. I feel like Hellraisers. I got. They're just, they're just moving around right now, not really able to do much. Yeah, they're going to go down into the B tunnel to connect it towards uh, B site and try and change it up. I mean, but the rotation distance is not that great. Nip are going to be able to get some defense here on this B site and change it up fairly quickly here. Kucher with that M4 right, waiting around the corner. May be able to catch a man off guard here, but Freiburg is going to instantly remove him from the map. Gets the good spray onto Adrian as well, and he's already pre-firing. He knows exactly where Markloff is coming from. Yeah, that's very cool, and Gerard will pick it off there. Freiburg really seems to be on form. He's really stepped it up here, angry at the loss against Epsilon. You can be sure. Definitely. And he's top fragging right now on the map, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. <laughs> and Adrian struggling with uh, with opening a bottle. I had the same problem earlier, so I'm not trying to make fun of him. The the, the bottles we have are all capped. They don't. They, uh, you can't. You yeah. know, like, you know, you can't just twi twist the lid off. So I keep having the same issue. I feel you, Adrian. I feel you. All right, eight round is coming up here, and we're going to be seeing. If NIP can continue this really great hold, rushing in is Doja looking for the spray, and he fails and instantly falls back. Yeah, and smart play there by Doja. Fifth Lauren will find Angel, however. Nice pick there towards mid area, towards, uh, looks like Party. 
or birthday, however we want to call it. I mean, there's balloons there, so basically we can call it birthday. All the balloons have been shot away, though. They're, they're oh. horrible. They don't like colors. They don't like cheerful things. It's well, I mean, their name, is, their name is Hellraisers. It only goes to, you know, you does make probably sense. assume. It's a question of time before they just Molotov the birthday party. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to wait until they're, you know, blowing out the candles. Here, blow out this candle. But right now, Nip have the man advantage, and Hellraisers are currently the ones trying to spread out across this map and look to see if Nip are going to overextend anywhere. Is Fif uh, Florin actually not going to land with that shot? But still, these kinds of angles are so dangerous. One good flash in from Hellraisers could force Fif Florin back, but if he manages to spot you taking the, taking the peak, he covers so much of the entrance into A with that AWP that he's going to be really tough to get rid of. He's taking up a very passive position for now, though, falling all the way back to Blue Room, so... We'll see. Exist is still on site proper, though. He's going to have eyes. There's only 30 seconds left right now. Hellraisers have got to get a move on. Time is running out. A Molotov is maybe going to buy even more time for NIP here. There's a flashbang that you were talking about all the way in the back. And now the rush is on for this A bomb site. Complete flashed. Exist will pick up the kill on Adrian. And now can they do more? A little bit of team damage almost there. Mark off it. Now just Doja left. One on five. NIP's lockdown on this map seems to be rock solid. Yeah. That's, that's the, br the brutal truth there, going for A site. This is why, you know, going into it, we don't think to see too much action on A site, because if the defense can get in there solid, and more importantly, if you don't have the nades really necessary, Hellraisers aren't exactly hitting those pop flash nades that can, that can white out the entire site. So Nip, you know, they lose Fifth Floor and he gets smoked off in Blue Room, but they still have Exist, and then they have the man rotating in as well, Get Right, I believe, to, uh, to support on that A site. So you're getting funneled through a choke, and Hellraisers with three guys just blazing away at them. It's not going to happen. We need to see more pick play out of Hellraiser, essentially. Try and, try and weaken the defense and open it up on B. I would actually love to see Hellraisers go for some sort of crazy rush. Try and see if they can get into the B bomb side by brute forcing it. Oh, they went I, for that in, their third, in that fourth, third, or in that fifth round, rather. Yeah, but I want to see them try and see if they can do it again. They really commit to it all the way, not just, you know, because what they did that round is they basically, oh, it's a nice kill coming from Doja, sorry. He's got the 1AK, so I guess they have that going for them. Must have had a lot of money to buy this up. This is something that Hellraisers will do, pick up that lone AK. But one kill isn't quite enough there. Doja would have loved to have gotten at least two frags with that gun. What they did in that one round where they went to the B-bomb site is they pushed in, but they stayed on the low ground, and they managed to... They, they stopped there, and they took aim duels with NIP. What I want to see is for them to push all the way up past where the, bombs, as of, where the bomb area actually is, and then... Put the bomb down and take the fight with NIP then. Not easy, I'm not saying that. Not easy, but, especially um, with the positions that Nip are holding, with the boost looking in towards the, the, the squeak door area, yeah. but coming I think out this, from pipe. But I think this slow style that's coming out right now is it could be detrimental to, to Hellraisers if they keep it up. Well, a lot of Hellraisers' play revolves around getting picks. Like, that's that's really their strong suit. As we mentioned uh, going into this map, you know, a lot of it comes down to, to sheer aim with Hellraisers. They have some strats, but then again, this is such a new map that they aren't going to be polished, so they really do need to look to just get the kills, and if they aren't managing to do that, that's when life gets fairly difficult, and Nip are currently sitting 6-3 right now with a good economy backing them as well, so it's not going to get any easier for Hellraisers going through the rest of this half. Freiburg boosted up, going to be able to spot out one. Goes for a bit of a spray spot as well, I like that. Yeah. As Valve have added the uh, sort of material indication, so you should be able to know when you can spray through things. Fiflarin very nearly caught. Can he get the pick off here? Angel comes in, sprays through, doesn't connect, and Fiflarin somehow stays alive. That should have probably been a kill, and Angel's on exactly one point of health here, so... Yeah. That was, I think, Fiflarin getting uh, maybe a little bit fortunate there. Uh, I think that was also, well, unlucky, really, because I think it was the light post that just saved Angel. I think Fiflarin clipped the light post, uh, clipped Angel through the light post, and so that made the difference. Doja, it's going to be too hot in the hot tub. He has to get out. But we like fire, don't we? Yeah, indeed. Ryberg sprays down. Great control. Wow. Takes down three members, and then he finally falls, but that is enough. And now Markolov is in a one-on-three. That was beautiful from Freiburg. Markolov trying to see if he can remedy the situation. It's going to go down. Nice hold from Freiburg. That triple kill was so good. That was a huge play by Freiburg, and that's exactly what we expect to see him. He's pissed off. 13-2-6 right now from Freiburg. But Nip thrives when Freiburg has plays like this, when he's able to get three frags, two frags, get the entry. That's what it's all about here for Nip. If Freiburg is leading the charge, this is going to give the confidence of the rest of the team to really step up their play. I mean, Exist is sitting at 10-2-5 right now as well, and that's great to see. So Nip, they're in control. They have the lead, and Hellraisers, they still have the money to get a pretty reasonable buy here, but we have yet to really see them change anything up. 
They've lost seven rounds in a row right now. NIP are looking so strong. Leg shot onto Adrian really nearly clips him here. Fuflaren doing good work at the moment. The grenade not going to connect with anyone. And he's going to be careful. He takes the peek again against Angel and is going to take him down with a straight headshot. Now he can just fall back and play it safely and he will do just that. Very fine work from Fuflaren right now. Yeah, this is all that Fuflaren needs to do. I mean, aggression from him to get that entry and do a lot of damage to Adrian. Adrian. And now they have a man advantage. Might as well be a man and a half advantage. Forrest lands the headshot on Kucha there. That's going to drop him low. And this is now getting just more and more difficult for Hellraisers. They've got two guys low. So those two guys basically have to set up the place for the other two who have the HP. And Nip just get to fall back to the site pretty much. They can hold all the angles now. Three guys on B2 on A and just be very content with this kind of situation. And again, the, the slow, the, the pickoff style that Hellraisers are going for is nowhere near working out for them. NIP have, it seems, put in a lot more work than the Hellraisers had at, at this map, and they know the angles, they know where to cover. Maybe that's time to change it up. I hope they will. Dosha with a good headshot on Get Right. They need a lot more here. It's a three on four. One guy burns to death, and Dosha's gonna get taken down. Freiburg, another triple kill, and it's gonna be it. Eight. Three here for NIP, and Freiburg has decided to single-handedly just take this map into his own hands and say, we are going to the playoffs. We will make it to that quarterfinals. He's got 16 2 and 6 right now, and we're only in the first half. He's looking pretty happy, and, get, and remember last time that these two teams faced DreamHack Summer? Last map, Dust 2, who finished it? Who got tired of it and decided it was time to end the game? Yeah, it was Freiburg, so it seems like he remembers that, and he's not messing around this time either. Another triple spray to end things. Hellraiser's yet another round without a plant, so they're limited on the nades. Forrest with a nice boost up into the toilet like that is going to manage to pick up the first frag, switches out for a nade and gets punished instantly. Doja returns, brings it back to a four on four. Flaren in a bit of a dangerous position, but he's going to be just fine falling back. And now they have to worry about not just the A bomb site, but him over here. They're actually going to smoke him off, which is definitely a smart plan for Hellraiser's. Grenade reigns in here, get right with a little pop flash over the wall. Hellraisers are trying to move up. Actually, they do have the A bomb side. They can go and put the bomb down, but I'm not sure they realize it yet. Molotov gonna fall into the hut here. Get right goes down. So an important kill for get for Angel right here. And we're in a four and three. Maybe it's time Hellraisers take a round. Angel with a second kill. Takes down Freiburg. And that's the one of the big heavy hitters here fall for it, fallen for an IP. Oh, this this Molotov is going to force Kucher out. Kucher exposed and Exist hunts him down, but Doja is still waiting in the room, and that's going to manage to clip it down to a 1v2. We already have Doja backing off, trying to change up position. Angel is waiting around the angle as well, and this is now going to be a very difficult situation for Exist, but he gets one. He brings it back to a 1v1. Angel waiting in the cut on the stairs. He's going to find him, but a very close round in the end. Hellraiser's now with four on the board, but this is... They're not out of the woods yet. They've reset their money. They have to get the follow-up round now to keep the momentum going their way. They most certainly do. NIP, on the other hand, have a disgusting amount of money, everything, and they still have eight, almost 9,000 on two of their players, and that's just absurd. It means they can buy pretty much for the rest of this half unless something really weird happens and they start buying a lot of auto-snipers in the upcoming round. We will see a much more aggressive move, move coming out here from NIP. Exist moving up. Markolov with a good headshot takes down Forrest. Flashbang reigns in. Exist is actually caught out here, and NIP change it up, and it's not for the better. No, it is not, and they, they, I mean, it's clear that they want to try and change the pace on Hellraisers, but why, it, it was working so well what they were doing before, so why decide to go for that kind of aggression and really try and catch Hellraisers off guard? They've gifted them three frags, it's now down to Fifth Lauren and Get Right, and granted, Fifth Lauren and Get Right, not bad guys to have in a clutch situation. We'll have to see if Get Right can get the drop on Hellraisers at any point, because Markov has taken damage, and Doja's about half HP. Get right, expecting them to sneak through pipe, but they're going the other way. Hellraisers are going to be able to walk out onto this B site unmolested. Bit of a grenade in there towards the construction area. Get right now, his position is much weaker. If Flaren might be able to snipe someone coming in from the high ground if he's a little bit lucky here. Get right getting caught with grenade in hand. And Markolov will pick up the second kill of the round for himself. If Flaren, now he's been spotted. The bomb is down and he should just try and run away. Up close, misses the shot and Angel will take him down. Flawless round for Hellraisers here, but I agree. Slightly gifted by NIP deciding to switch it up when everything else seemed to be working just fine. Mm -hmm. Hellraiser's playing passive. We've seen this all half long, and Nip not really running into the blender. 
until then. And that's yeah. why Hellraisers would hold like that. That's why they would hold far back, is because if Nip try and go for that sort of thing, they're going to be in a position to be able to take advantage of that. Yeah. But it is obviously a calculated risk. It could have worked out for NIP. Maybe oh, Hellraisers sure. were getting too used to it. So it's really hard to say. Obviously, we know now it didn't work out so well. Now we're at 5 to 8 here in the 14th round. And if NIP lose this round, they actually won't have all that much money. So they got to be a little bit careful here that they don't end up uh, throwing it all too much away. Because I think... I actually think five or six rounds is enough on the terror side of this map. I can't, again, I can't promise you that, but I feel like that might be enough. That might be it, yeah, that might be what it takes. Right now, as far as the money is concerned for Nip, I mean, they're able to buy up again in this round. Not so sure about the rest of them, though. Exist is boosted up. Not sure if the man waiting in Squeak Door saw that, though. Adrian is waiting around the corner, and Adrian is just, he's just hoping that he's going to peek. He puts a shot through, and now Exist knows that he's exposed. Galil, oh, tries for the shot here. A little bit of damage on to Freiburg. And it seems like at this point, if you kill Freiburg, you, you increase your odds of winning the round quite uh, significantly. Gerai with a really good pick and a great flash to follow. He's down to 15. He's going to go down to Dosha. Now Freiburg has done it once and twice and even three times in this bomb site. Can he do it once more to see if he can win this round for his team? 30 seconds left and Hellraisers are actually going back to the A-bomb site. The bomb is miles away. I think this is a fake. I think they are going to commit to B, but Angel is trying to put as much work in here as he can. Yeah, I love it. They're really trying to throw Nip for a loop right now. If is going to miss that shot, but he gets the second try. Angel's down. Forest gets Hadron, and now it will be back to this B site, but Freiburg is ready and waiting. A line behind the barrels. He's going to take the peek and run straight into a headshot from Doja, but Exist is here to support. And then IP not not inching, not not moving an inch here. They just stayed in their positions. They didn't buy the fix. That's really cool. Um, Got to appreciate how they play this out. Exist with a double kill, and it will be nine five. First half is drawing to a close. We need one more round here, and Hellraisers, luckily for them, they actually can force it up. They just have enough money for it. So that's really important. But, um, yeah, and IP not buying anything at all. And IP are yeah exactly. They just sit. They play with two guys on each side, and they just sit patiently. They wait to see exactly what's in store for them. They don't overcommit or take anything that Hellraiser shows them. Uh, show uh, them, excuse me, at face value. So. Now we're into the 15th round, the last round of this half, and this would be a big difference. Hellraisers, if they could get six rounds in this half, that would be great work. And they rush straight out through Squeak Door. There's three guys on this B site, however, for Nip, and they've already got the mollies down. They've already got the info. Thing is, look at Hellraisers already. They're, they're preparing to see if they can catch Nip off guard. If Nip decide to use those boost spots that they've been really focusing on, Hellraisers are prepared to punish them. And I like this adjustment here from Hellraisers. Uh, Angel and uh, Dosha, both very low on health. Got to be careful that they don't catch a grenade or anything. Flashbang goes over, just trying to disrupt whatever Hellraiser is doing on the other side of this wall. And we'll see if they can manage it. Right now, it feels like they're a little bit standing just too much still Hellraisers. I feel like this isn't so much slow play as it is a little bit confused play. Yeah, they're really taking their time with it. I mean, they, they need to still find a pick. That's the thing. So far, they've not come out ahead. And again, Freiburg with the wall banging. Step back to 1.6, boys. Freiburg. He's getting, he, now they have a three-man advantage. Nipper in a terrific position. Doja brings it back, gets a headshot on Get Right. He does manage to get the bomb here, Adrian. But they still have to deal with an entrenched defense on this B site. Nip are holding, Exist will find Doja, and it's down to Adrian, who will not get it done. Forrest with the final frag of the half. But that's the kind of performance that Nip are expecting to get. They've practiced the maps. It's all gone well for them in the maps, or in the prac, rather. So going into the live match this time, this is what was supposed to happen on Cobble. And the crowd here at Gamescom, not unimpressed by NIP's performance here. Freiburg topping the scoreboard at 17 kills. You see him all the way at the left there. Hellraisers, not exactly looking completely um, distraught, but obviously, now come the second half, winning the pistol round. I actually think if they do that, they can bounce right back here. Yeah. But it depends, because NIP's CT setup was looking really solid. If they've practiced as much for the terrorist side, if they're as, as keen on that, who knows? Anything is possible. That, that, that's something that's clear, and that's something that, uh, that Cloud9 and Titan taught us yesterday, right? That the comeback is always real. But uh, until that 16th round is on the board, or you finish the overtime. But right now, Nip, you can be sure that they've got some ideas here as to what they want to do in their T-side pistol. The question is, is it's going to come down to whether Hellraisers can really just land the shots. I mean, we saw in the first pistol round, it really went Nip's way because they, they made the call, right? The, uh, Hellraisers eventually go to the B-site, but Nip had already put four guys on that B-site. Calling the, calling the play ahead of time. The scary thought experiment is imagining what would have happened if Hellraisers hadn't won the pistol. Yeah, that is... Uh, we have been looking at a 13-2 scoreline. I mean, it's possible at this point. That was three rounds that Hellraisers picked up at the beginning. Yeah, out of the five they had. Mm -hmm. So not saying that's entirely, you know, that had to work out that way. 
But uh, Hell Racers, maybe, uh, I don't know. I think they, they spent too many rounds uh, where they where they crept around too slowly and got picked off. And one of the rounds they got was actually from NIP sort of rushing into them. It was and a gift. the other one was for the A bomb sign, and they went B a lot, so we'll have to see. Definitely all smiles right yeah, now. looking a lot more looking, cheery. I, I think right now it's like it's got to be like relief on their sides, basically, because after that performance on Cobble, you know, I was talking to a guy right, and he was, he was looking a little, you know, uh, beaten up, definitely, a little bit down. But after a performance like that in the first half, where they know they know the mistakes that they made, they didn't get the pistol, they gave away a round, now they have to be feeling pretty good going into this. But we've already got Hellraisers clapping their hands, making sure that they are hype. And now we get into the second round pistol. Can Nip break the curse? They have yet to take a single pistol round throughout this group stage for them. They are 0-5 in pistol rounds right now, Anders. Yeah, they are. They lost both pistol rounds to Team Wolf, and uh, it's, the trend has continued against Epsilon. So let's see if they can do it here. Just that win, one out of six, it's still pretty bad, but maybe it's going to be enough to actually win this game. 10-5, and a big welcome to everyone who's joining us since we started here at the stream. Let's see, Hellraisers, pretty aggressive over towards the A side of the map, in fact. Markolov moving around trying to spot anyone, and then IP are inching their way forward. They're really taking their time with this, but NIP putting a lot of emphasis on long right now. There is going to be Angel. And he jumps over, he's gonna try and get a peek, spots out one, and gets the instant headshot on Forrest. That's a big kill. Drops the nade as well at Piflarin's speed. Piflarin manages to dodge most of the damage, but Nip, they've already been battered here at the beginning of the round. They cannot be feeling too confident going into the rest of this. Very important kill here. Hellraisers, if you're in this round, we're looking at something like 10-8, unless uh, the c said comes in and disrupts everything. And at that point... Anything's possible. Probably anybody's game, you know. Yeah, right, not sure if he spotted Dozer there. I don't think he did. He just missed him by an inch, and now it's down to time. And Gerard charging forward. Dosha knows. Oh, Gerard checks anyway. Can he pick up this kill? Dosha has to reload. Gerard out of bullets, and Dosha wins the battle. Oh, God. Both members had to reload, but Dosha did it two seconds earlier and came out on top. Now they're rushing in. It's a 5 on 3. NIP want this site, and maybe they're going to get it. Freiburg, are you kidding me? Angel and Kucha go down, and now Makalov is going to be alone. What a performance. And he looks so focused, but Exist is now gone. It's a 1v2. Freiburg's still alive, and he's looking to get Markolov's back. Markolov has to know. He's trying to find the angle. He knows he's behind the bags, but Freiburg with three, and they pick up the pistol. They break the curse, and Nip are now very far ahead. They have got the advantage going into this. And look at the hug from Peter. Definitely some love in that one shot. Freiburg is indestructible. That was so cool. Now we're at 11 to 5 and I think NIP are just inches away from making the playoffs here in spite of some pretty stacked odds against them. Uh, this is this is the bounce back right now, but this is what makes Nip so powerful, their ability to come back in these sorts of situations. It's now down to Hellraisers to weather the storm, deal as much damage as possible with these pistol, the pistols that they've bought up. They've got CZs, they might as well have AKs. We have to see if they can get anything out of it and do some damage to slow down Nip, because they need to make Nip spend some money right now. They can't let Nip's economy get out of control. That's what it's about right now. It's about eco-management for Hellraisers. Get some damage in there, make Nip spend the dollar bills, and then rely on that 19th round to just shut Nip down. For the longest time, the, the selling point when we were trying to explain why NIP was such a dangerous team was that they had so many people that could at any one point step it up. And usually when we said that, we were sort of halfway implying that we meant get right or forest. And then Freiburg with the entry frags, but this time it's been all Freiburg. He has just been carrying way, way more than he should in this game. Like, that's what has to happen for Nip. That's what has to happen for Nip. Freiburg has to have strong performances. We see them struggle when he doesn't. Getright's gonna spot out the first man, goes for the Pro 90 spray down. He has no soul, and now it's gonna be two. Getright gets two, and he gets taken out, but the damage is done, and Nip should be able to make it out onto this site. They are getting, they are, they are in trouble, though. Oh, Losing no. members left and right. Angel with a sick pick off here. The bomb is going to go down and Exist should be able to deal with Angel here. Just not enough health for it. A really dangerous eco round coming out here from Hellraisers. Taking down three people and could have dropped even more. But NIP stabilized. They're at 12-5 and Hellraisers still cannot buy any rifles. I cannot believe it. Freiburg currently at 24 and 10. And actually Exist is very close by at 19-3 and 8. Sort of ratio-wise, Exist is doing better. Just died a few times less. So it's Exist and Freiburg stepping it up right now. And that's, uh, I mean, this could be an effect that PETA is having on the team right now. Exist, you know, he's done it in the past, stepped up. Even as uh, is that 
you know, really fulfilling that in-game leader role, right? Thinking about everything, but Pete is taking a lot of the load off of Exist's shoulders at this point, watching this game, communicating with them, and telling them exactly what Hellraisers are up to. Exist is free to frag. And Freiburg, basically, we look to him to get the entry frags, to get the job done, and give Nip the openings. So with both of those players really stepping it up right now, this is great for Nip. Hellraisers, however, I mean, it still comes down to this next round. It still comes down to the 19th round for Hellraisers. It does. And, um, yeah, we can never really count them out here. Right now, I'm looking for Freiburg to do everything. Whatever they ask of him, he's probably going to step it up and do it. He's more than just in the zone right now. I'm surprised Get Right goes for the Pro 90, though, because you get less money with kills for the Pro 90. So as an anti-eco weapon, if you're going to go for an SMG, I'm surprised that he goes for the Pro 90 and not, you know, like an MP7 or something like that if he really wants to get that extra bang for his buck. Yeah, maybe. Well... He hasn't had much luck with the Bison in the past. Markolov could actually stop the bomb from going down here, but he's going to hesitate and maybe actually just wait for a pickoff here. He doesn't have a kit, so the Ninja Diffuse option is looking increasingly unlikely, but um, they don't know he's there, and they don't actually have much of a reason to go and check it. No, it's one of the few spots. It's actually one of the only spots that you really desperately need to check as T-side coming onto this B-site is those sandbags and then the sandbags that are close to closer to CT. So Markolov right now hiding behind one of the likely spots. Freiburg is going to check it, and he's going to find him in the end. So fairly easy frag there. But now we go into the all-important 19th round here, where Nip and Hellraisers. Hellraisers basically battling for their tournament life. It's right here, because if they lose this, they have to force up to try and stop Nip from getting to, getting to that match point. So now it's do or die time here for Hellraisers. All the pressure on them. They have the money after those Ecos to get a pretty healthy buy. Markolov with the AWP. Get right with the AWP for Nip. Something that we've seen in the past that has had very little success is get right or ping. So I'm worried that they're doing this, but at the same time, it can't help but be a little bit intrigued if it's going to work out. Adrian already kind of low on health, down to 8 HP, in fact. And then IP, if they win this round, I'm not sure there's any stopping them. I think if Hellraisers want to make a Cloud9 style comeback, it has to start with this round. It has to. It's going to be one round at a time. Adrian getting sprayed through, essentially, it seems. And Freiburg does the damage, but doesn't find the kill. For now, at least, Nip are really taking their time. Just making sure that Hellraiser can't push into them anywhere. Just making sure that, you know, mid is under control. They've given up on long, but long is kind of not really the, like the focal point. It's all about this area here, mid, and the lower tunnel that Freiburg has now managed to sneak his way through. They clear it out, and now they're able to split up B if they want, Nip. They can make their way out from Squeak Door, and they're going to be right there looking towards the B site. Kucha holding towards construction. I actually can see them coming out and should have pretty good a kill on Freiburg then, but he just can't be killed. Forrest will save him with a good headshot. Doshin now defending inside here by the barrels. He spots one guy. He knows he's down there. He's going to be ducking to avoid doing any damage from any other angles, and he's going to go down anyway. Forrest with a stunning triple kill still on 9 HP, and the bomb is going to go down here. This retake is going to be very tough, but they start off with a good kill on Forrest. Yeah, they get that crucial kill. Bring it back to a two on three. Markloff and Angel, they have to take their time. They have to pace themselves. Markloff on high with this. AWP could find a shot fairly quickly, but the smoke is down, cutting up the site, and Nip are not giving him any targets to work with. He realizes this and has to change position, but it looks like Hellraisers, after seeing that Nip weren't going to give it to them, they decide to back off and hold on to these guns. And that's actually, at the end, the right call to make. If you can't get that kill to bring it to a two-on-two -two very quickly, right as that bomb goes down, it's very tough to break the Triangle of Doom, Anders. This is happening. Freiburg with a bit of... Uh a bit of positive feedback from Forrest there. And there was a triple in that round for Forrest, and he had very little HP to do it with, so hugely important. Opening up the B-bomb site single-handedly. 14-5, two more rounds, and then IP make the playoffs after getting uh, destroyed by Epsilon and, um, and maybe almost not making it out of the group. Well, it's not done until we've got 16 on the board. And right now, Hellraisers, because they saved those two guns, they've got enough to spread it out and get a pretty reasonable buy going in here. Kocher is now going to be the one holding the AWP. Markloff deciding to go back to the M4, which is something we see Hellraisers do fairly often. If Markloff isn't feeling the sniper rifle, a lot of it comes down to feel for Hellraisers. It's who wants to take the gun. But Exist is going to find the entry over on the B site, clicking away at Doja. He's not going to get the kill, though. Doja puts him down, but Adrian taking damage there. Angel shanking him in the back. Yeah, that's not good. Team damage is not something you need right now. Doja doing a fine job, and now he's going to get a little bit too curious. I was going to say, if he keeps walking down, it's Get Right waiting for him. Now it's Orb versus Orb, and two people really don't normally see Orb. So Doja versus Get Right in an Orb battle. That's strange. Doja is very capable with the Orb, though. He's actually, like, we see Hellraisers, we see 
see him use it sometimes for Hellraisers. Even on Inferno, we've seen him pick it up. And he is Yeah, but I would still say capable. the priority would be Markov, then Kucha. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Kucha is the second choice. But, uh, Doja Get Right actually put Doja ahead of Get Right. So this is, uh, if Get Right decides to try and peek through here, Doja is capable of taking him out. Freiburg making noise over at Squeak Door, making sure that, uh, you know, the likely angles aren't being used here, checking those uh, boost spots. But he's going to get control of this position now. And once again, Nip are going to be in a position to be able to split this up with some bright flashes and smokes. They should be able to get onto this site. Very patient play from Doge. He spots oh, the he gun the barrel. barrel. He definitely knows. Forrest making some noise. He's going to pick off one. Doja does get the shot in the B-bomb sign. That's really important here. It goes down, though. Great shot from Freiburg. Instantly returned by Adrian. Now Fiflarin alone, one on two. Doesn't connect with the spray. Adrian will pick it up in Hellraisers. They managed to save a couple of rifles the round before. They forced up with Famasis, and it pays off. Yeah, now patience is key here for Hellraisers. Again, not mountains of cash, but still holding on to two guns. They can still drop it around. They can still get everybody reasonably equipped. But we are going into NIP, essentially, with another opportunity here to get on match point. And right now, because of the damage Hellraisers are taking, if they lose at this point, if they lose at any point, NIP should be able to take this game because Hellraisers are not going to have the money for a full buy. That's exactly right. Good flashbangs in there, but um, NIP are still pushing the issue. Doja goes down. This might be the opening. Kucha with a really great kill, but it's not enough. Forrest will take him down in Freiburg is still alive, and that's obviously an issue. The bomb goes down, NIP, this might be exactly the round that they need. Hellraisers are completely out of position to defend this. They're gonna be pushing out, they don't realize who Flaren is right there. He takes down one, he takes down two, and now Markolov alone in a one on four here. This, this is the round, Semler. This is the round, there's no backing up now. Markolov misses the opportunity, doesn't spot the man in the smoke. He is gonna pick up Freiburg. And that's the only kill he's going to get. He's run out of time. He doesn't have the time to get all three kills and get onto this site to defuse the bomb. Markolov manages to get the party shot on Get Right as well. At least he's he's making it count. But Fiflarin's already on the hunt, and Fiflarin's already killed two of his compatriots. NIP seemingly much better prepared on this map than Hellraisers were. On the CT side, on the terrorist side, match and map point a single round away from. From, from the quad, second seed for making it into the playoffs. That's what's at stake right now. Either you win or you're out of the tournament. This is a double elimination format. You'll win twice, you're through. You'll lose twice, and that's it. You're out of the second major of the year. But Hellraisers now, as we can see, they lose that round, and they just don't have the money. Markolov has an AWP that he managed to save, but Kucher, Angel, the only two guys with rifles on this team. The rest of them have to go for pistols. So Nip have an overwhelming advantage right now. They just need to play a patient and start looking for the picks. Markolov playing very aggressive right now as well. He needs to make sure that he can actually get up here. He has to take a risk. He has to do something to throw Nip off. And this aggressive hold from him could pay off here if Nip decide to run out and check through mid. Fiflarin peeking the angle, gets past. Markolov not landing the shot. Oh, and now they know. So now they're going to be playing very differently this forward. Markolov smokes off one angle. He's going to look for the fountain here. He does get the kill on Forrest. Nothing going to get by Markolov when he's in this kind of mood. And he jumps to spot Fiflarin as well. But from behind, Adrian gets picked off now. Markolov is actually trapped in a box. He still picks up a kill. Kucha's going to get one on get right. And now it's a 2 on 3 Not looking bad for Hellraisers, but the task ahead is a, is a really giant one. It's basically winning the next eight rounds in a row. And Exist, oh, but Markolov gets the shot first. Exist does the damage, but Markolov gets the kill, and that's three for Markolov now. His aggression early on really paying off. Freiburg now in a 1v3, but only with 16 points of health. Even if they only had pistols, this is perfect for Hellraisers. All three members left alive, and there's no way Freiburg can hunt them all down. Look at how far spread out they are. With 15 seconds left on this clock, he has to go for the plant right now. There is no option. Yeah, 10 seconds, and they know instantly. That smoke means it's going to be a push in here. Freiburg is going to be able to put down the bomb, but he's putting the guy the very second he does. There it is, Kucha not giving him any option. So good job for him in IP, at least putting down the bomb and getting some more money on the board, which actually they do kind of need. It's only really two people from NIP that can afford to buy, so they are probably going to be, uh, be waiting here and just waiting until they have the adequate amount of money. But... Again, Semler, we're talking about eight rounds in a row for Hellraisers to force overtime. It can definitely happen, but my god, it's it's a long ways away. And look at what Nipper doing. Okay. They had enough on Fiflarin. I think he had 70... No, was it Fiflarin? Yes, he had 7,100. He spends every dime he's got. 
to spread out and get the money for his team, to basically give up the money to get the rifles. Nip, this is like very exist right now. If Nip have even just enough, barely enough money to get rifles and nades, and just a couple nades, it's all right. He's going to be like, bye. He's, he doesn't care about eco rounds. Exist is not interested in that. He wants to keep the pressure up on Hellraisers right now. He does not want to let them get any kind of room to make a comeback happen. We saw what C9 did to Titan yesterday. Ooh. But get right, he's hungry. He goes for the barbecue and picks up Doja. And Freiburg with the Deagle can't pick up the second one, but already got the first kill here. Angel down towards the water and looking to see if he can get one more kill. He will pick up Forrest. That bomb still not planted. It's a three on three. Angel comes in, gets a second one. Pistols out. It's just Fuflaren left here. And Hellraisers, they adjust to it. That looked like it was definitely going to be NIP's round. Fuflaren gets a kill on Angel, but it might be too late. Eight seconds on the bomb. That's the thing. The bomb is not in any kind of position for him to be able to get it back. He goes for a bit of the pop flash through. That's going to force Adrian out into the open. But he's he still can't get on that bomb, and that's the crucial part here. So long as Hellraisers hold these angles, Fuflaren can't actually get there. He has to land the shots. Drops Markle off the seven. But Markoloff will return with the headshot on him, and they are not out of it yet, Hellraisers. Eight rounds on the board for them now. They need another seven to take this to overtime. And it feels like it's really Markoloff and Angel trying to do their very best to keep this back. Dosha to Kucha is almost entirely out of the map right now. He's only got three kills. That's nowhere near enough, and I actually wish they would put an AWP on Kucha and, and just sit him somewhere, or an auto sniper or anything like that. Yeah. Just sit him in a corner and say, Kucha, this is your job, just stay here, we'll take care of the rest. Uh, Hellraisers are really rotating very early now to that B side as well, they're not wasting too much time, because initially we see them actually put two guys out there. So, the defense has been altered, Nip trying to take advantage of that, but now it looks like Nip are going to have to change things up. This is an eco round for Nip, however, they have finally been forced to save their money. Markloff spots the shadow of one guy. He tries to look for Freiburg, but he's just a second too late. And now he has to be a bit careful about Freiburg wrapping around on him. Freiburg, if he looks to the right, there you go, point blank. And he gets the kill this time. Oh no, that's not a good start. Adrian waiting over here by the end of the picnic and actually does spot a couple of people, but he can still be wrapped around too. He's got to be careful that he doesn't get backstabbed and he's got some teammates with him there. So they managed to adjust the situation, but this one AWP picked up in a Freiburg as well. He picks off Adrian, what a headshot. Is there going to be more? Suits a second too soon, but that's a double in an eco for Freiburg, who's now rocking 26 kills. Yeah, 26 kills. They end it here. He won't get the 30 bomb, but if Nip end this on an eco round, that would be monstrous. Freiburg with two kills. He decides to hold on to that AWP as well. Doja waiting right around the corner, spots the movement, throws down a couple shots. But he's still alive on this site. He's going to be able to buy some time with that Molotov, but he is close to getting wrapped in on it. He will, in fact, he's still getting the kill. They can't actually get rid of him. Doja, 20 HP, and he's still here. Fuflaren alone doesn't work out at the end for all that Freiburg did. It wasn't quite enough here. One on three for Fuflaren without a rifle. Really wants to pick it up. But um, well, he will actually be able to and just run away. That could be pretty good for NIP if they can save it. But he's just going to hide it and then run. He doesn't want them to pick it up in return. So that's interesting. He died. No, oh, what? If Doja had got the kill on him, then that would have been Fuflaren dying after the time. And so now he gets a gun. They give him a gun and he still has money to buy up nades and armor. Fuflaren, that was masterful right there. All right then, so 15 to nine, six more rounds for Hellraisers. It's, the gap is closing. I have a hard time believing it. But uh, to count Hellraisers out would also be stupid. No, they're, they're capable of taking this one round at a time. And that's what it comes down to. The mindset right now that these players are in is one round at a time. We don't think about the scoreboard. We don't even look at the scoreboard anymore until the game stops, basically, and we go to overtime. It's just one step. And Nip, it's the same to be said for them. Basically, one round is all they need to secure their second seed in the playoffs tomorrow in the quarterfinal matches that are going to be go played all tomorrow. We're not going to miss a single one as well. All of them best of threes, and they will all be played throughout the day here on this stream. But for now, Nip content to just wait and see if they can find a pick here. Angel is going to get the drop on one man. That's Freiburg actually taken out here. Forrest is going to return, though, and gets the refrag, and that was crucial for Nip. Angel could have very easily picked up that kill because from that angle when Forrest walks in, his shadow actually reveals that he's going to be there beforehand. Markolov, great timing, and Forrest is going to be gone. So right now looking good, long range here. Fuflaren doesn't come out on top. Markolov is really on point. He's really playing a solid game here on LAN, and that's no surprise. Not at all. 
Exist is trying to look for another way in. This is the second heavy hitter here for Nip so far in this game. He's looking for Markov, and Markov, the timing, doesn't get it right. Does some damage, but no frag. Brings it back to a two on three here. And Nip only have 30 seconds left on this clock. They need to group up and start figuring out exactly where they want to go. They've got the perfect read, however, Hellraisers. Two guys already waiting on the side proper, and Doja pushing in to lend a hand as well. Yeah. Yeah, and IP trying for some smokes and some flashbangs into this bomb site. They are going to go for it right here. Exist goes down. Kutra with an AWP and a second shot. So there it is. That's exactly what I wanted them to do. Had Kutra orping is such a smart play right now because the one thing, Kutra is not like Markolov, not like FX or any other orper like that. What Kutra does well is hold an angle and hold it really well. He doesn't do flashy flick shots or anything else like that. He just gets the kills exactly when he needs it. Yeah, consistent. Yeah, consistent. consistent. He gets, he's all about consistency and, and patience. That's Kucher. And now, well, now Nip again are forced to eco. This is starting to get a bit too close for comfort here, especially, you know, Hellraisers. They seem to have found themselves the aggressive play, pushing around the map, finding Nip and catching them off guard. Taking out Freiburg in that last round was crucial, but now, Hellraisers, they continue to push their weight around the map. Exist is going to manage to wrap, wrap all the way through the lower tunnel here into Connector, so... Where exactly do, this, do they decide to take this nip? I mean, once again, they're on pistols, so they're, they've got limited firepower. It seems like it may just be a straight-up push to A. They've got a men in the toilet, but Angel's going to manage to spot that out early enough and do some damage. All right. Adrian and Angel and Markov picking up some good kills here. Existing get right left and as you said Ikaran coming out here not really too uh, too much they could have done obviously Hellraiser's managed to hold on to this round just fine making it 15-11 right now Markolov has 23 kills tied with Exist and just Freiburg still actually stuck at 26 which he's been for a couple of rounds here and the big thing for NIP is carrying this all the way home. They only need one opening. Mm -hmm. They only need one bomb plant, and it's going to be working out. That's the crew, that's the part. That's the part that really matters here. They just need the bomb plant. If they can get a plant and play the after plant positions on off of this, Hellraisers are going to be hard pressed to deal with it. Nip, however, not really finding the entries here. Adrian going to work his way down into the lower tunnel here and see if he can't catch Nip pushing up because Nip have been doing this fairly consistently. Freiburg taking point. He's just picturing, you know, he's in banana right now. He's in banana and he is the master. But the flash goes out, doesn't really stop. Adrian doesn't stop Freiburg either. He gets the entry. That might just be enough. Freiburg is ready to pick it up where he left it off now. 27 kills. Still way more than a minute left here. But Adrian losing control of the middle of the map. Can Hellraisers adjust to this position? They have two at A, two at B. So they're holding a very standard setup here for uh, for overpass. Yep. Not putting the extra man on B right now, but then Nip haven't been necessarily going over there. Nip are actually going for exact, exactly what we thought would be like the vanilla play for T side, which is get a pick on A and then collapse towards B. Get control, and Freiburg finds Kutcher. There's another headshot. Two-man lead now for Nip, closing in on this site. The Molly is buying time, but Nip's have still got 40 seconds left. They don't feel the pressure quite yet. Doja gonna get in position behind the barrels though, and this is gonna be the go-to spot. Can Nip root him out? Freiburg wants that triple. Great grenades. Doja on 11 HP. This is gonna be it for NIP. Doja's gonna peek up, but no, he goes down. Angel has dropped Freiburg with a triple kill. One more, and it's gonna be a 30 bomb. Markolov all alone, one on five. Bomb down, and NIP have made the playoffs. There's nothing that Markolov can do at this point. No longer is it gonna happen. He's just waiting, he's hoping they make a mistake, but it is all over. Fiflaren takes the peek, and he does go down, and Freiburg, ding, 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 is a jackpot. He picks up. 30 kills against Hellraisers, and they win the game and make the quarterfinals. What a performance from NIP, and what a performance from Freiburg. What a performance from Freiburg. Yet again, it's just it's DreamHack summer all over again, man. That last map and that best of three, Freiburg is the man to come through this time yet again for his team and decide it's over, Hellraisers. It's been fun, but that's it. We're going to the playoffs, and you are going home. Freiburg, he's the animal friend. But they need to pick him up, right? him basically off the stage because that was such a performance. Hellraiser's not exactly uh, content with the situation, but as we've been saying time and again, this tournament is so stacked. They're every single group this is going to happen. We're going to look at a team and say they deserve to move on. They are good enough to move on, but this time they didn't. That's just the nature of, uh, of this $250,000 tournament here at Gamescom. Yeah, and Heaton is there. He's got their backs as well, as always. Uh, they have got to be so happy right now. Elated, I mean, 
Nip, the, the pressure on them is monstrous going into this tournament. Everybody now expects them to repeat history and get into the finals, and this time to change it, to take that finals. All of the pressure is now on them to pick up that major that they are the ones. It's like they're, they're, they're meant to be the champions of a major, and they have yet to do it. Now they've actually made it possible. They've survived the group. Yes, and the weird thing about NIP, and I can't explain why this is, but they have a, a pattern which says they struggle horribly in the group stages, mm -hmm. and then somehow when it comes to, when it really matters in the playoffs, they manage to carry it through, so maybe they're going to be able to repeat that. Certainly, uh, this team has been struggling so much in the, in the last couple of months even. And it's been, it's, I've actually had a very hard time finding anything positive really to say about them. Yeah. Which is strange, but it really has been difficult. When it comes down to it, I know this is the thing, we've seen, it, it's like doubt in Nip's play. It's, it's yeah. almost as if they doubt themselves, like they don't have the confidence. And we've seen them trying to adjust things, trying to change it up, going on vacation. And look at this here. Oh, yeah, the, these right. are players that for a very, very long time have been playing against each other mm -hmm. in this game. Not, and, and in 1.6, the history between all these go back a really long way, so uh, a measure of respect is, uh, is invoked here as well uh, from Get Right, definitely. They're all going to come and, uh, and shake hands. Yeah, they have to at this point. I mean, this is it. This is the, be the biggest tournament so far in CS history. You just knocked out a contender, and these guys will go for the handshake, no doubt about it. They are true gentlemen. But that, that has got to be insanely frustrating for Hellraisers as well, especially looking oh, so definitely. solid. I mean, it's been all over the place, really. Hellraisers, you know, they were off to a rough start. They got nailed by Epsilon 16-1 on Inferno, so definitely not the start they were looking for to this tournament. And they do manage to recover somewhat by taking out Wolf yesterday in the, decide, in the first uh, loser match, essentially, to decide who was going to leave the group first. So going into this, you know, it's kind of like, okay, where exactly do we stand? right now going up against nip when it what it all comes down to either nip or epsilon epsilon those were the two teams that they were going to face and hellraisers i'm sure they would have preferred epsilon at this point but even then look at what epsilon did to nip i don't know uh, i'm sure i'm sure this is not the last we're going to see of hellraisers they are a team that has potential to make it all the way to grand finals in any yeah. major tournament um but you know it's going to happen not just in this group this is group a of course and we've actually just finished with group a so that means the two teams out are wolf and uh, and hellraise there's two teams through first seed is epsilon second seed is nip and it, it's for every group we're going to have games like these where it's going to be almost unbelievable there it is epsilon and nip first and second seed through to the quarterfinals esl1 gamescom 2014. this is it the second major of the year here funded by the community for the community and these players are already putting on one hell of a show yesterday we had record numbers tune in for the tournament the first day of the groups when we had the first matches of the groups and the loser match today we go into the side who's going to take first seed who's going to get second seed and who is the second team to get out of the groups actually i'd love to go ahead and take a look real quick at the rest of the groups as yeah. well just to get an idea because coming up next on the channel here at the tournament we're going to be having group b to decide who's going to move on from there that is ldlc navi and copenhagen wolves london conspiracy didn't make it through they lost to LDLC on Nuke, and it's a hard map for them to, to fight the, the Norwegian team. Such a cool team, but they, they couldn't make it through this time. And now we're going to be having our next game, which is LDLC and Navi. Obviously, we'll have a bit of a break, but mm -hmm. that is the next game coming up. And then Copenhagen was are waiting for the losers of that match. So, again, a group in which you could say any one of these three teams could make it through. Absolutely any one. Yeah, exactly. This is the beauty of it. Ever since these groups came out, we've been looking forward to it. It's the most hyped tournament so far this yeah. year. And with all but the teams and how well they're playing, this is what it's all about. For me, the, 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 the awful group, the group of tears, is still going to be Group D. Group D? Well, yesterday, I mean, we've already had one of the most beautiful comebacks in CS, pretty much. I mean, yeah. Cloud9 versus Titan yesterday on Dust2 was a thing of beauty. I Cloud9 just, I mean, the, Hiko I is the king of clutch. I can almost guarantee, well, Semphis. Semphis too, but I, Hiko, man. I can almost guarantee that there's, there are going to be a few tears on the stream for yeah, you, at least. It's when, be no matter what happens, no matter what the outcome of that group is, there's going to be some crying going on, because that that's going to be painful. But it's going to be later today. We'll cover all of the group stages today to figure out exactly what teams are making it through. But what, a, what an absolutely great game that was. Almost looked like Hellraisers were going to make it back with NIP. Once again, making it happen. We are going to go to a bit of a commercial break before we get back, guys. So do not go anywhere. Stay tuned and invite your friends. We'll be back soon enough.